If you are listening to this podcast for the first time, this is the second in a series with Larry Nellis, one of the 831 people that made a difference in my life. He was the head coach on Kokanee Glacier at the Griffin Summer Camps in British Columbia, Canada. The first time I met Larry, I was 13 years of age and he gave me the 100 challenge. Do 100 push-ups, sit-ups, chin-ups, and bench hops in a minute and ride a bike 100 miles any day of the year if you want to wear one of these national team sweaters. I achieved these goals three years later and was training on Kokanee and we prepared the slopes and were talking about Newton's laws of gravity that morning before the campers arrived on the hill from breakfast. The previous podcast is called Laws of Gravity, so please listen to it to place this podcast in context if you missed it. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you're listening to 831 Living Your Best Life, where we inspire participation, communicate precision, empower performers to podium. And you can tell your friends and relatives to go to their favorite podcast provider or to junglejimhunter.com or YouTube and subscribe, download, click on like, rate and review us and become an 831er, someone that wants to live their best life so they can help others live their best life. Well, Newton's first law is the law of gravity and how it makes us all equal. Before you step in the starting gate, we all have the same opportunity to work with the law of gravity to be the fastest down this course. However, it's training the laws of the heart that give us the greatest opportunity. And when I say the laws of the heart or laws of growth, it's the rules we have to play by because the sport or the endeavor that we're trying to pursue requires it. It isn't that they're laws that hold you and bind you and collectively make your life more miserable. It's just the way it has to be done. And to finish first every day or every chance you get, we have to apply those rules to growth and development and of the heart, as opposed to the law of gravity. And we learned in the first one that the law of gravity always pulls us down. Today, we're going to look at the second law of gravity that Newton told us. Larry had my attention, and he knew it. So once he realized I understood, he said, Newton's second law comes into play. A body at rest stays at rest until acted upon by an outside force. In other words, Jim, you're not going anywhere until you vault yourself out of the start as fast as you possibly can. So get it in gear, he yelled. Get it in gear. How many times have I been asked by parents, how do I get my son or daughter in gear? How do I get my employees in gear? Matter of fact, how do I get myself in gear? Where does that motivation come from? He paused to make sure that the law fully impacted my head, my hands, my heels, and my heart. If you are not strong enough to explode out of the start faster than anyone else, or at least as fast as anyone else in the world, knowing up to that point you're all equal, then you dare not get into the start, he said. I dare say you shouldn't even go to the games, already giving up the first advantage you can possibly have in the first second. Every thousandth of a second counts, he said. Hit the wand at the latest possible tick and explode forward faster and further and arrive at the first gate faster than anyone else. Then he explained, everyone comes to a stop sign or a stoplight. And watch what happens. There are some that take it out of gear and then have to put it back in gear before they move. There are some that have to look both ways before they go across the light because, well, They're not sure who's coming or if anybody's coming. But when you get to the Olympic Games, Jim, they aren't going to give you a second restart if you're not ready to go. Are you ready to go? Was your body, was your skiing and your preparation in place so that you were ready to respond? What was my first response out of the start? Was I like the drivers at the light? I still had to put it in gear. I still had to look around. Did I wait to see if anyone else moved or... Was I in gear, focused to explode? No time to look around. Where was my heart? Was it thinking about other things or was it totally focused on what lay right ahead of me and what I was going to do in the first three gates? We learned to overcome the pull of gravity and work with it to give us a way to fly. It took creativity and work. There again, there's the rules that apply to what you're trying to do. And so we have to know those. And it took that creativity and the work for a newborn to develop muscles to be able to be strong enough to stand. Even a newborn has to fight against gravity. They have to fight against gravity to get strong enough to walk and eventually run. And it's easy to build a muscle. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of effort and a little bit of power and the coordination, well, to hit the starting wand as fast at the last possible moment as possible. At the heart level, 
It's a different story, though. You see, at the heart level, it's where our emotions are stored. And the word emotion and motivation come from the same root word. Does it come from something or someone outside of ourselves demanding that we do something? Or does it come from someone bribing us like a parent does when you are being pushed to take the first step? You see, parents become con jobs. They become conners. Men and women who try to get their child to do something for them before they're even one years of age will say, I'll give you your favorite blanket, I'll give you a cookie, I'll give you your favorite plush animal or a candy. Then you compound it by celebrating, smiling and cheering and hugging you. Yes, they celebrate the fact that they conned you into doing something. Before you're a year old, you're already learning how to be manipulated so you can manipulate others to get what you want. Does it come from then reversing that same process and using discipline and threats of control? Yes, that's what happens later. Are you confused? I was. Were you? Maybe you still are. Maybe you use these techniques today in coaxing your people to do better. Rewards and gold stars to be a better student or a better employee. Deprive ice time or pay more if you score more goals. Or if you will do this, I will do this so you can get what you want. Is there a better way? The word motive, motivation, and emotion all have the same root word. It means to move you. What moves us? Your emotions. When is the last time someone taught you how to train your emotions? Until you take that first step to walk because you want to walk, you could be walking just to please others, to make others like you. There on the Kokanee Glacier, I asked myself, why do I need to get in the starting gate and throw my body down a ski hill? That morning, I had to think about it. Just to beat someone else? To beat the Austrians? I had experienced it. I was happy with a good result and sad with a bad one. But that wasn't how I approached it. I don't think I am a better racer or a worse racer because of what I did or what I can't do or what I should do. That wasn't even in my mind. I wasn't here to beat someone else. That isn't the kind of person I need to be. I need to have a higher calling than that. My whole body felt the heat of the Olympic flame as Larry turned the heat up in the furnace inside me. Larry paused. He smiled and winked, which was his habit. And he waited for me to catch up to see if I had it. The seed had been planted and was starting to swell from the inside. It all connected to what my dad had taught me about the seed and how the seed that is sown on the farm has everything that it needs to produce as many seeds as it possibly can. And it doesn't need anything else except to send down roots and shoots to gather in what it needs. Food for the plant to become all that it can become. Water, fertilizer, nutrients. I recognized instantly that most of the time to that point, that the heart gets pulled down and the focus to be better each time trying to beat somebody else and that external motivation is never going to work. Just to beat another competitor isn't going to motivate you because next time if he beats you, well, you're weaker. My method was working. It was working, but now I believed it. With the heart, it stays at rest until acted upon by an inside force. You see, Gravity pulls us down and we have to act upon that and against that gravity to get going, just like the airplane has to change the way the wind passes over the wing to make it lighter than air. But the heart, it's got to come from the inside. My dad and mom lived a sacrificing life with dad on the farm and mom in Calgary because I had demonstrated to them that I was motivated from the heart inside me and didn't require rewards, medals, bribes, trophies, equipment, coaches, manipulation, threats, or disciplinary action. I was already motivated. I had never had a trophy up to that point. What's more is I enjoyed discovering for myself what I could do better each day. I can't thank you enough, Larry, for bringing it all together for me that morning. You helped me see what I was unsure of and now firmly believed. My quote for the day, we believe the lies we tell ourselves in our first response when emotionally driven. How do you respond emotionally? What do you think about? What's your first words out of your mouth when you're emotionally sent in a direction? Is it positive? Is it negative? Because if it's negative, it's quite likely that you're motivated externally. But if it's positive, there's a good chance you've trained your heart and you've taught your emotions from the inside out. You are living 
by the laws of the heart, the laws of growth. I thank you for listening. I hope you will have grown and will be living your best life the next time we meet.